Right, so hello and welcome to another 90 Day Fiancé video on Arthur TV. Today, the day has finally come where we see the grand finale of the Big Ed and Rose saga. So last time out, we watched the aftermath unfold after Rose savagely dumped Big Ed. Ed stormed off following the breakup and before he had time to cool down and head back to the hotel room, Rose had gone. With his tail between his legs, Big Ed headed home for California, heartbroken and alone. Today, we're going to be looking at the Tell All episodes where Big Ed and Rose are reunited one last time to discuss the events that took place over the series, reveal where their relationship is now and talk about their plans for the future. We'll also be looking at some of the clips of Ed since he returned home to the United States. So first up, Big Ed's getting his camera ready for the Tell All Group video call with Rose, the host and the rest of this season's 90 Day Fiancé cast. Teddy, come here, buddy. Come here. My goal today is to find out if Rose had a hidden agenda. I'm not really sure what Rose is gonna say today. Um, for me, this is not about feelings. This is about what the order of the facts. And uh, I know I have questions that I want answers to. So the first topic of conversation was where Big Ed and Rose's relationship stands now and whether he had seen or heard from Rose since the relationship came to an end. Well, immediately when I got back from the Philippines, um, we FaceTimed a little bit, but then um, the last time was, I think Rosemary wasn't it around Valentine's Day. Rosemary reached out to me. No, I'm siya po yung nag unang nag message sa akin eh. I can show you the messages, I have them all here. And what made me mad is she reached out to me and I, I asked her. I kasi maging bastos kaya nagre-reply ako sa kanya. Okay. Pero siya yung chat ng chat sa akin eh, wala katigil-tigil yan eh. She says she only replied to him to not seem rude, but she doesn't owe him anything. She really should have just cut him off completely when she got back home. You know, it's a shame they had to do all of this over a video call rather than in a studio because of the pandemic. Because the rest of the cast have decent microphones, decent cameras, decent Wi-Fi, and Rose is stuck there with 2010 YouTuber equipment. You'd think with all the money that the show earned this season telling her story, that they would have given at least a little bit to her, to at least allow her to buy a decent camera and microphone for this episode. Especially given they didn't even pay for her to be on the show in the first place. Like it kind of starts her off at a bit of a disadvantage and it feels a little bit unfair. She reached out to me if she was so angry with me why did she reach out to me on February 9th? Does that look like she's frustrated or she's angry at me? Rose you reached out to me you wanted to start a relationship again and wanted me back and wanted a present for Valentine's Day. You wanted me to come and see you. You know, I can kind of believe this. I'm not usually on Ed's side, but I don't think he's making this up and they've obviously been in touch. Like how often do you know a couple that just shouldn't be together because their relationship is so toxic? And then they finally break up, but a few months later you find out that they've been seeing each other the entire time on the sly. Also, I don't think holding up pictures of Rose using face filters proves much, other than that Big Ed screenshots FaceTime calls, which doesn't seem too bad for now, but wait for the big revelation that comes in a few minutes. And I was ready. Sean, I was ready. I miss Rose. I love Rose. I was ready to give up everything. My daughter, I was ready to give up my daughter. I had already repaired that relationship with Tiffany, but I had feelings for Rose. Now this was a savage moment. So when Ed arrived back in California, one of the things he said he wanted to focus on was repairing his relationship with his daughter, who he originally fell out with after he told her about Rose and how much younger she was than him. Ultimately, in the end, it failed, but I'm gonna be okay. And now I'm just ready to mend my relationship with my daughter. Okay, before we go on, did you guys clock everything that was in that bathroom? In case you missed it, there is a picture of a girl in a bra on the wall, a picture of a girl in a skirt and thigh highs, a bra hanging off what looks like a mask, and another mask. And that is only what you can see in this one small shot. Imagine what the rest of his house looks like. I'm grossed out, but not surprised. When my dad told me about Rosemary, I freaked out and my dad and I had a huge argument on the phone. I was so hurt with the fact that he wasn't listening to his only daughter that is coming from a place of love and concern that I ceased all contact with him. I don't know how to 
to move past that, at least right now. So as well as dating a girl 31 years younger than him, Big Ed gets criticized a lot for pushing his Big Ed brand as much as possible. In some of the other videos I've done, quite a lot of you have noticed that Big Ed is wearing his own merch in some of the clips. Like he's walking around the monkey park with Big Ed stickers on his backpack and they're still there in the post breakup video. And now he's driving around in a car with Big Ed on the license plate. You know, the more I see of this, the more I believe Rose when she says he was just in it for the fame. It's so funny, he's got such a big ego for such a small man. I was upset that you're old enough to be your dad and I was just like, what are you doing? 23? I'm 29. What do you have in, what do you have in common with her? Like, I just, it was hard. Cause you were blowing me off and essentially saying F you, like, I don't give a I'm just gonna do whatever. It would actually be so interesting to go back and see their first conversation about all this now. I really wish TLC had recorded it. I wonder how much Ed actually considered what she was saying at the time. And I wonder how much of a risk Ed originally thought it was. It's hard to tell in hindsight whether he was really going for love, whether he was just lonely and thought it was worth the risk, or whether he knew it wasn't gonna work out and saw it as his shot at fame. I guess we'll never know, but what do you guys think? For what it's worth, I'm sorry for not listening, you know, to you. And the fact that I hurt you. I appreciate that. I'm human. I know. I'm a dumbass. I'm a human funny dumbass. It's a shame because she can laugh all this off now, but imagine how she's going to feel when she actually watches the show. Like now she's probably feeling a little bit embarrassed thinking like, oh, he got sucked into something which wasn't real and that's why it just didn't work out, as she obviously expected. But she is going to be absolutely mortified when she watches the show and realises what her dad is really like. It's unconfirmed as of yet, but apparently she's seen the whole series and is no longer talking to him again. Surprise, surprise, right? I really want to focus on putting my relationship back together with my daughter, but... I have no regrets about finding Rose and falling in love. It broke my heart. I spent a lot of time, a lot of money, but I just wanted to be happy. I wanted what every couple I see every day has. I want intimacy. I want love. You know what else I don't like about this? That they followed Ed back home after the breakup, but not Rose. I mean, Ed's obviously very entertaining in a laughing at him, not with him kind of way, but I wish they had done all this with Rose as well. I'd love to hear Rose's sister and dad talk about Ed now. Given they're not together anymore, I don't think they'd hold back at all, and it would be so entertaining to see them absolutely go in on Ed, and I'm sure they'd have a lot to say. Anyway, Ed saying that he was ready to give up his daughter again so soon after making up with her and apologizing must have been so hard for her to hear, and unfortunately, she was watching live. That, I will be honest, I was pretty shocked to hear that right now, that when she reached out to him again, that he was willing to jeopardize our relationship again. Um, it sucks. I mean, I'm his only daughter, and he's willing to jeopardize our relationship again for love. I think the saddest thing was this wasn't even love. I mean, I don't think anyone could look at Big Ed and think that he was actually in love with Rose. So Ed choosing whatever he did have with Rose over his own daughter must have made it hurt so much more. I mean, I didn't mean, I didn't mean it like that. I, mean, I would never give you up in a million years. I would, I meant I, I, I risked losing you. I was, I put everything on the line and I, I'm sorry. And I hope you know I love you so much. I would have never stopped trying, but Tiffany, I was just following my heart. I'm, I'm an idiot. I fell in love. I apologize. Because I was in love. He's so freaking dramatic. It's so ridiculous. He talks like he's on stage as the protagonist in some romantic tragedy story. It's like he's trying to audition for a role in the live action remake of Nomeo and Juliet. Anyway, speaking of love, do you remember that episode where we talked about the rumours going around that Rose was dating a woman? Well, she denied it at the time on Instagram in her comment section, but for some reason, Big Ed decided to bring it up again. Then I go on your Facebook and I see a picture of you holding a watch. This, this is you and your girlfriend. And you had told me that you don't have a girlfriend. What is this, Rose? Please tell me what this is. Rose, are you now in a relationship with a woman? For now, no. Before, after the break, uh, Ed. 
I think this is another one of those times where Ed either just doesn't understand boundaries or just completely lacks any respect for Rose. I mean, it's just not really relevant, is it? She broke up with him. Whatever she does after the relationship is completely up to her. Also, she publicly denied being in a relationship with a woman and he knows that. So it's really not his place to put her on the spot about it or out her as bisexual or speculate on her sexuality. I mean, this is our seventh Big Ed video, so it's not surprising anymore, but it's still disappointing. She reached out to me because she had broken up with her girlfriend and wanted wanted me back and wanted a present for Valentine's Day. Sabi niya kung gusto niya pa di ba kausapin kita? Pwede mag-usap tayo. Hindi naman lahat ang pinapakita niya na na nakaisip eh. I really don't understand what the pictures of Rose with face filters is meant to prove. He's such a strange guy. Also, he really keeps bringing up the fact that she asked him for a Valentine's Day present, doesn't he? This might be a bit of a reach, but I think he's trying to push the idea that she's materialistic. I think him repeating that is him trying to shift some of the blame for the failure of the relationship onto Rose. Like, making it seem like she only cares about money plays into his delusion that the relationship failed because it wasn't real. The reason I think he's trying to shift the blame for the failure of the relationship is because failure is one of the main things he was talking about about when he first got back from the Philippines. My adventure to the Philippines, to me, Rose, is over. She broke up with me. I don't want to tell people what happened because I am now, I'm a failure. And given he thinks that, it would kind of make sense that he would be the one pursuing Rose. Because if they got back together, then he wouldn't be seen as a failure anymore. And obviously we all know how much he cares about his image. Also, it's funny that being seen as a failure is what he's worried about, but not being seen as a self-centered, sexist, narcissistic divvy. Yeah, Rose was saying that actually Ed wanted to get back together and that he was asking for a second chance. Oh no, God. Why? <laughs> I love how he's like, why would I want a second chance? When literally just the other day he said this. What I want more than anything right now is to pick up my heart and move on. But there's a big part of me that still hopes Rose might talk to me again. The whole who started communicating first was kind of a he said, she said thing that just wasn't really going anywhere. But then the whole episode took a turn when Rose accused Ed of doing this. So Ed, Ed, what is this sex video that Rose is talking about? We're, go we're going here. It's, cra it's like, it's, what? Please. I'm saying it's a lie. It's just a lie. Oh my God. It's a lie. Oh my God, the faces of the other 90 Day Fiancé cast really got me. But I completely forgot that Ed's daughter is watching this too. She must just be sitting there thinking the fact that she looks absolutely nothing like her dad and might actually be adopted might not be such a bad thing after all. <laughs> oh my God. How do you make this up? How do you come up with these ideas? Are you kidding me? No, you're a liar. Always you're a liar. Don't start making up stuff. That's ridiculous. Come on. Wow. Nice little Owen Wilson impression there to sum up the mood. Ed just laughing this off and denying it ever happened is such peak gaslighting, isn't it? You know, one thing that doesn't make sense to me is if Ed was being like this at the talking stage of the relationship, why did Rose still agree to meet him and pursue a relationship with him? I don't know, maybe she had already signed the contract with 90 Day Fiancé or maybe she just didn't think much of it. But if she's saying her living conditions are terrible and her family have problems and he's looking to exploit that using his privilege, that is a serious red flag. I think it really shifts the dynamic and I think that's where there's a risk of abuse. This kind of behaviour seems to support some of the other accusations against him as well. A woman called Laura Keat on TikTok claims that she used to work with Ed and has accused him of harassing and assaulting her. I think people already had a feeling that the way that Big Ed treated Rose and how their relationship originally came about had quite strong grooming undertones to it. So these accusations bring this whole story into quite a dark place. The episode then went down a more light-hearted path by watching back some of the season's key moments and having Big Ed and Rose react to them. And no Big Ed compilation would be complete without the funniest lost in translation moment of the series. I love you. I love you. Does that mean I love you? I hope it means I love you. I love how she's trying so hard not to laugh. 
Now I've got to give credit where credit's due. Big Ed realises a lot of his mistakes and seems to give a genuine apology for them, which must be quite nice for Rose to hear. One of which was for the way he went about asking her to take an STD test when she refused to talk about her past. So first of all, I don't think I was wrong in asking. I was wrong in the way I asked. I take responsibility for that. Was I wrong to ask her to do that? No, because she was hiding her past. So I had a right to ask, but the way I did it, was not the right way to go. Ed also had the chance to address the time he asked Rose to shave her legs. So first of all, I apologize for asking you to shave your legs, but let me explain. I live in Southern California and women in California, they laser their legs. So it was something that I wasn't familiar with, but I, I apologize, I apologize. You know, he was so close here, so close to a genuine apology. I mean, it was a bit weird bringing up LA women and how they laser their legs, but you can kind of understand what he's trying to say and that he's apologizing. But classic Ed couldn't keep his mouth shut. Uh, it did weird me out, I'm gonna be totally honest. It was weird, it was weird for me, and I wasn't used to it, but I apologize if I hurt you for asking you to do that. That was not my intention. I wanted you to love me. I didn't want to make you mad. I can't accept your apologies. Why? Why? Because you always hurt me and you up come, you embarrass me, you up and come, you embarrass me. I, I accept you are always embarrass me because I love you, but I always a liar. I always love Ed's facial expression whenever he gets shouted at. He looks like a deer caught in headlights. With Ed repeatedly saying that it's weird and gross that she has leg hair and just airing all of these criticisms that he has about her, her body and her past all over again on a live group call that's going on national television. It's understandable that Rose was pretty embarrassed and upset by all of this. It's all stuff that we've spoken about on this channel before and Ed seemed to at least understand why people were angry at him. But then someone brought up the moment that he told Rose that he didn't want to have any more kids. I know, that was that was hindsight's wrong. I didn't want kids. I could. Raising kids in America, as you know, you have two beautiful daughters. They're expensive. They cost money. Ed seemed to completely miss the point on this one. No one was criticizing him for not wanting any more kids. We were criticizing him for leading Rose on and not telling her that he doesn't want to have any more kids. And then only finally telling her when the relationship got more serious and it was harder for her to walk away. His mum ended up collecting him from the airport and on the journey home, he made an even more shocking revelation. No Rose. No, no love. Rose. Oh. I'm so sorry. Thank you. It's for the best. It's for the best. I'm not even ready to be a father to Prince, let alone, you know, father two more kids at 54 years old. When I told her I didn't want more kids, that upset her. Now this is something he never told Rose and it just goes to show how egocentric he is. Putting his own feelings first with complete disregard to a kid's is so low, even by Big Ed's standards. The entire time he was in the Philippines, as far as we could see, he made such little effort with Prince, especially taking his mum away for a vacation and leaving him behind. It really just shows how little he cares about anyone else but himself. The whole car journey was really weird as well. Like he says in this clip, he kind of tells the whole story making it out as if things just didn't work out, which just obviously isn't true it was a direct result of him being a bad person. Literally not once did he mention that he had done anything wrong or take any blame for the relationship failing. It's the kind of conversation you can get away with off camera, but when you're on camera, everyone's just gonna be listening and being like, well, that's just not true, is it? It was actually quite nice to have the other cast members there to put him on the spot about things. And one of them even interrupted one of his monologues to roast him. Let's say we, we want to shower too with you. First of all, are we gonna get naked? Like, am I gonna strip down in front of everyone? But thankfully, we, I got to leave my shorts on. But what I didn't expect was the, the water was freezing. And I look at my feet and there was a rat that looked like it was dying. <laughs> oh no. Oh, come on, Ed. You haven't seen your feet in years. Stop lying. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he actually made that joke and they kept it in. You know, it's always a tough one joking about someone's appearance. There's a fine line between banter and bullying and I think everyone draws that line in a different place. Ed also has a condition called Klippel Fahl syndrome which shortens his neck and affects his stature. So I feel like that decision is a lot more sensitive when it comes to Ed. I think people know on this channel that the whole point is to come and watch and join in roasting people. But on daytime TV with a wide audience, that is a bold move. 
So Rose, is there anything that you still love about Ed? I don't like nothing. Can you ever see yourself being friends? No, I don't want any connection to Ed. Okay, Ed, what do you think about that? It didn't work out and I'm sorry. I wish Rose the best that life has to offer. I don't want her to be sad or miserable. It just didn't work out, but my, my feelings were sincere. Okay, I know you're sad and I know what you're thinking, but fortunately this isn't the end of Big Ed. This series of 90 Day Fiancé Before the 90 Days has been such a hit on TLC that they've decided to commission a new series called B90 Strikes Back, where the cast watches episodes each week and responds to criticism and mockery from social media. Who knows, maybe we'll make an appearance at some point. Anyway, there'll be more Big Ed content to come, and I'm sure this won't be the last we'll hear of this fame-hungry little specimen. So make sure you subscribe down below if you don't want to miss out on what happens next. I'll also of course be uploading other 90 Day Fiancé episodes along with other TV shows and anything else that I find interesting. So if you're enjoying the content feel free to subscribe because it'd be great to have you. I also just wanted to say a quick thank you to everyone who's been watching the Big Ed and Rose saga unfold on this channel with me. It's been my first We Watch series and it's been so much fun. So for all the views, comments, likes and subscribes I just wanted to let you know how much I appreciate you guys. Anyway as always I'll be streaming on Twitch in between uploads and the link to that along with links to my Instagram and Twitter will be down below. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.